Let's start our discussion of electrochemistry. I thought we'd start out with this quote because it shows us how when they were first discussing this, this was the response to what is the practical use of electricity. They never could have imagined all of the other things that we use electricity for on a day-to-day -day basis. Imagine trying to tell somebody at this day and age what a cell phone is and how you can use electricity to power that. Um, and so this is also a little bit of a sales pitch for why investing in things that we don't know the purpose of can be really, really, really important um, from a public standpoint. But let's start by going over what we're going to learn in this chapter and introducing it a bit. Here are our learning goals for the chapters. So we want to learn to balance redox reactions. And there's, of course, several parts to learning how to do this. Um, and then we want to learn about finding voltages of chemical cells and relate that into all of the thermodynamic parameters that we learned about in previous chapters. So relating that to, for instance, Gibbs free energy. And then also relate that into equilibrium constants that we also learned in earlier chapters. All of these things are related, and so we're going to connect all of these concepts. We're going to want to be able to do this both as standard and non-standard voltages. Um, as usual, we have kind of a standard that we base things at, and then in real life, we're generally not at standard conditions. Um, and then finally, determining what will and will not undergo redox reactions. And of course, how is this going to apply to different things throughout our lives? So some of the things that we're going to discuss um, in terms of applications, since electrochemistry has a lot of them, are fuel cells, um, how corrosion works and how we can stop that. And that's where electroplating comes in. And then also we'll discuss a little bit about batteries. So first off, what is electrochemistry? This is the chemistry that is the intersection of electrical and chemical energy. Um, it's possible because in some reactions, electrons are exchanged between species. And then we can direct this flow of electrons to do work and do all sorts of different purposes, such as making electricity or electroplating. Here we have a redox reaction that isn't really set up to allow the electrons to do any sort of work. But it is fun to watch. The zinc and the copper are exchanging electrons. Now from the reaction that I've written above, we see that the zinc goes from a plus zero to a plus two, which means that it loses electrons and gives them to the copper, which is going from a plus two to a zero. In this chapter, we'll learn how to talk about these reactions that have this electron exchange. We'll learn about terminology for referring to these reactions and how to balance reactions so that we're accounting for the electron exchange and then how all of this impacts us daily. And we'll cover each of these in another video.